Paul Campbell is a real estate agent from Canada who has a very peculiar way of getting things done. In fact, <laughs> he is a cheat. He never repairs or amends the properties he is about to sell and just covers them with various objects. Unfortunately for Paul, most of his clients catch wind of the deceit and leave within the first five minutes. This has made him a very unsuccessful real estate agent, because of which he and his family are forced to live a very modest life with no luxuries whatsoever. Sounds like a Canadian to me. One day, as he returns home from work, he learns that his beloved uncle passed away. On one hand, Paul is devastated by the loss, but on the other hand, he is ecstatic, as the uncle was a millionaire with no other relatives. This means that Paul is going to inherit all his property. However, when he meets his uncle's lawyer, he learns that the old man actually donated all of his wealth to charity. All he left for his nephew is a small plant. Frustrated and annoyed, Paul takes the plant with him and heads home. The next morning, during breakfast, Paul is still in a bad mood. He chastises his kids for spending too much money, when in reality, they have barely spent $20 this week. It is revealed that Paul has never given them pocket money, because of which they have started disliking him. That's not even enough for a Fortnite skin, Dad. After breakfast, Paul clears a storeroom in his backyard and places the plant there. He is still angry at his uncle, but also decides to show some respect by watering the plant. And as soon as he does so, surprisingly, a $100 bill pops out of it. Paul quickly plucks it out and stares at it in disbelief. This is when he realizes that the plant is not an ordinary one, but an actual money plant. As Paul tries to find out more about it, his family suddenly arrives there. However, instead of showing them his new find, he changes the topic and sends them away. It is apparent that he doesn't want his family to find out about his money plant. The following day, when Paul returns from work, he nervously heads to the storeroom to check if the plant has grown more money. To his delight, thousands of dollars are hanging from the plant. In this way, Paul continues harvesting money from the plant while also hiding it from his own family. One day, an old man named Tim arrives at the door, claiming to be his deceased uncle's best friend. He requests a small donation for his organization and Paul, who is in an extremely good mood, writes him a check for $1,000. This surprises the family and as soon as Tim leaves, they confront Paul about his newfound wealth. However, instead of revealing everything honestly, he once again lies, saying that he has been selling a lot of properties as of late. As the days pass, Paul becomes a rich person. He has now started wearing designer clothes, ditching his worn out and ragged outfit. He also gives both his children $200 as pocket money. Whoa, screw skins! Now we can buy an actual good game! This creates a very happy environment in the house for the first time in years. In the next scene, we see a totally changed Paul. He no longer cares about petty cash and is always looking for ways to spend more money. In one instance, he buys an expensive lawnmower, although his house doesn't have much of a lawn. In another instance, when his work colleague Jack makes fun of his old car, Paul gets angry and ends up buying a sports car. However, he makes the mistake of paying everything in cash, because of which the car dealer becomes suspicious, believing that Paul is involved in illicit activities. He quickly informs the police about it. Car dealers are snakes, they would never do that. Soon, Detective Miller arrives at the scene and takes all the information she can from the car dealer. When she puts two and two together, she also deduces that Paul is involved in illegal stuff, so she makes it her mission to catch him red-handed. Meanwhile, Paul heads to his workplace and shows off his expensive car to Jack. <laughs> and you thought I had a small pee-pee, Jack. When the latter inquires how he could afford it, Paul says that his uncle left him a lot of money money as an inheritance. Following this, he heads home and surprises his family with the car. While the children are over the moon with the new purchase, his wife Grace starts becoming suspicious. She requests Paul to honestly tell her about the source of income, but just like the last time, he ignores her. Over the course of the next few days, Grace continues asking the same question, but Paul always finds a way to ignore her. This causes the couple to have minor arguments. One morning, the old man, Tim, once again shows up outside requesting a donation. However, Paul, who is now in a bad mood, sends Tim's ass away rudely. After he leaves for the office, Detective Miller arrives at the house and interrogates Grace. She inquires about her husband's line of work, and despite all the arguments as of late, Grace defends Paul. She mentions that he is an honest and hard-working real estate agent who has never done anything illegal. Realizing that she will not get any help from his family, Detective Miller decides to take matters into her own hands. She conducts a thorough research on Paul's profile and learns that he hasn't made a single sale in the last month. This makes her even more sure that he is involved in something wrong. Meanwhile, Paul's life starts spiraling out of his hands because of the constant nagging he suffers at the hands of his wife. Grace demands to know where he gets all his money and slowly but steadily, even she 
starts doubting his conscience. To make matters worse, the plant also stops giving out cash, assuming that someone has cursed him. Paul hands out money to all the people who may think badly of him. He also goes to Tim's office and gives him a huge donation. He simply wants to lift the curse so that his plant can once again start functioning. But Tim, who has been impressed by the real estate agent's attitude, shares with him some words of wisdom. He asks Paul to share his wealth with the ones in need, claiming that it will bring him happiness and satisfaction. Paul likes the idea, and to start off with, he dumps some more money on the desk before leaving. Unfortunately, just after a few minutes, Detective Miller arrives at the scene and notices the large amount of cash lying on Tim's table. This makes her assume that the old man is an associate of Paul, and that both of them are dealing in illicit stuff. That night, a sleepless Paul heads to the storeroom and tries every possible way to revive the plant. At one point, he even reads the Holy Bible, hoping that God will help him out. Unfortunately, all his efforts are in vain. The next morning, Paul heads to a cafe and buys a takeaway coffee for himself. On the way out, he runs into a homeless man and gives him a $100 bill to continue his Good Samaritan gimmick. He also gives away his coffee to make sure the man doesn't stay thirsty. Unfortunately, right after he leaves, Detective Miller again shows up. She spots the homeless man with the cash and assumes that he is helping Paul distribute narcotics in the area. Hence, she apprehends him without giving him a chance to speak. Elsewhere, we learn that Paul was supposed to attend his son's all-important football match, but as usual, he left home without informing anyone. This has left his son very disappointed and angry. Currently, Grace is trying her best to contact Paul, but he just won't pick up. When nothing works, she, along with her daughter Carrie, head to Paul's factory to look for him. The place is dark and gloomy, with no signs of any workers around. As Carrie enters a shady-looking room, she accidentally falls through a hole that had been covered by a cloth. Turns out, Paul was supposed to fix it, but he simply hid the hole to save time. Now his own daughter has paid the price for his negligence. In the next scene, we are taken to the hospital, where it is revealed that Carrie has suffered a fractured arm. Paul's colleague Jack is furious at him for always slacking at work and being reckless. He almost ends up punching him, but backs out at the last moment and leaves. Later, Paul also realizes his mistake and starts weeping in front of his wife. All his life, he has used shortcuts when he should have done things in a better way. This is the only reason his family has always been on the back foot. Being the good wife that she is, Grace forgives him for everything and asks that he start anew. That night, Carrie is finally discharged from the hospital, and everyone finally breathes a sigh of relief. Paul also makes amends with his son by promising to always be by his side and never abandon him again. He has now finally realized that family is more important than anything else in the world. Paul promises to be a better person from now on. However, the very next morning, Detective Miller arrives outside his home and arrests him. As Paul is taken to jail, he is shocked to see the homeless person from earlier. Tim is also there, and he finally reveals everything. He mentions that he knows about the money plant. In fact, he was the one who discovered it in the first place. When Paul's uncle was going through a hard time, Tim gave him the money plant, hoping it would solve his problems. However, the exact opposite happened. With more money, there came more greed, and Paul's uncle started falling into an even dangerous hole of depression. But with some guidance and counseling, he totally turned his life around. He started using all his wealth to help those in need, and this ultimately made him happier. Then he died. After Tim finishes narrating his story, he urges Paul to do the same. That is, to always help others around him. A while later, all three of them are surprisingly released from jail. It turns out that Jack told the authorities that he and Paul became massively rich after they sold a large property in New York. But in reality, it was only Jack who conducted the whole deal. He simply lied to the cops to save his friend. With this, Detective Miller is left with no evidence against Paul. So, she stops investigating him once and for all. You heard it, kids. If you get in trouble for lying, just lie again. The following day, Tim's organization holds a small function, and Paul's entire family is invited. Turns out to be a homestay for orphaned children who have no one to look after them. Tim was collecting the donations to help continue this project. Soon, Paul is invited on stage, and with all the experiences he has had, he delivers an emotional speech. At first, he declares that he will sell his sports car and donate all the funds to the organization. He also vows to always help the children in one way or another, earning himself a round of applause from all the attendees. In particular, his family and Jack are greatly impressed. In the final scene, we see Paul and his family heading out for a vacation. As of now, he doesn't have a lot of cash, like he used to when the money plant was delivering. But at least, he is happy, and that's all that matters. Paul shakes hands with Tim and returns him the money plant, as he knows now the actual value of life. He then gets into his car and drives away with his family, making for a happy ending. Subscribe for more videos like this turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.